I'm going to start this episode off by saying I hated music videos. I never felt comfortable acting, walking without looking at the camera, pretending I was in deep thought, you know, that kind of stuff. But when you have someone like Stephen Yake directing you and saying, hey, trust me, this is going to be great. You just take a deep breath and you keep going, right? And you know what? You were right, Stephen. You did make us look good. But those handful of for him music videos that you worked on didn't put didn't put you on the map. Uh, you created lifelong memories of Carmen fighting the devil, showing us that DC talk were just as cool as her music sounded, <laughs> and ultimately made every artist you worked with have another connection point with their audience. From I, this is going way back, going from Fire by Night mm -hmm. to Carmen's Time Two to all the music videos you had on ZTV. Remember ZTV? Oh yeah, Grand. Yeah, and eventually on to feature films. Mm -hmm. My guest has had an amazing career, and it's not even close to being over yet. So you cannot tell the story of Christian music without telling the story of my good friend, Stephen Yake. Well, thank you. That's correct. And Gospel Bill. Don't forget Gospel Bill. Oh, my. So now we're going way back. So, that's, yeah, that's, let's just start there because we, yeah. have, a, we have a pretty strong connection mm -hmm. because Gospel Bill is Willie George, mm -hmm. and Willie George hired me to be the worship pastor at Church on the Move in 2005, and I've been in Tulsa ever since. Yeah, Willie, Willie yeah. George hired me from Lester Summerall mm -hmm. um, up in South Bend, Indiana, to come down and start the Gospel Bill Show and put together a TV system. Him and another guy and I, and so we packed up, he offered us you know, pretty good money, and we said, okay, Tulsa? I don't know nothing about Tulsa, but you know, <laughs> I mean, South Bend, Indiana, you know, is he, yeah. Anything, anything's up. <laughs> yeah. And you can still see those. I still see Gospel Bill every Saturday morning or Sunday morning somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are still it, running. Yeah. And, you know, far by night. And, you know, it's like, I don't know if they, <laughs> he's, the, no one's syndicating it. I mean, no one's selling it. I mean, he, well, he just gave, gave it away. And yeah. that's, that's just his heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny because uh, I've, I've, I've run into a lot of artists. I, I'm the first person. Um, uh, that I think of is David Crowder, mm -hmm. who was like, "Oh my gosh, I got saved watching Gospel Bill." Like, yeah. like that was a big influence in my life. I've I've talked to so many artists that came through Church on the Move. It's like, wait a minute, that's Gospel Bill. They'd see they'd see Pastor George from the, a distance, and they're just like yeah. going nuts. Just yeah. want to go talk to him and say thank you for for all those Gospel Bill shows. Yeah, and then so Gospel Bill, and they they graduated in the fire by night. Yep. And that was a show that I created in college. I went to Evangel College, Evangel University in Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. And uh, my teacher, uh, one of our assignments was create a show, right? Uh, you know, write something and, you know, a Christian program that you think could be cool. So I wrote, I had this idea about Fire by Night, even way back in college. I wrote, wrote it out and um, she gave me a C minus. <laughs> this, 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 this is not doable. No, she says, I don't know what Christian, you know, where you, how you could make that. I said, well, I think I can, you know, and, you know, then eventually, you know, how well you sold subscriptions to, to yeah. videos, you know, fire when I hit 8,000 videos a month. Wow. To youth groups all across the country. And I still, to this day, get emails and texts and people that message me say that show helped me get through so many things, you know, growing up. Who were some of the artists that were, on fire by night who, who who would come through there well you know who our very first one was carmen and that's how, and that's who you, that's how you met him right yep i mean the, he i called joe jones his manager because carmen was in tulsa at the time and i said you know kind of gave me the idea of what we were doing and what we're you know would carmen be interested in you know, taking out and there's no way well the joe calls me back says yeah carmen would love to i said he wants to come and studio you know tour of the studio to see what we're dealing with i said okay yeah and so when he came over and saw it he was like oh cool man i mean this this is because willie spent some bucks on the equipment back yeah. then. oh know? yeah oh yeah that was his that was his mo man if you're gonna yeah. do it do it right yep and so carmen and, and then from then we got second chapter of Acts, we got phil keggy and then michael w smith and um that was my first dove award um oh wow and then, uh, you know, on and on, Kenny Marks, um, Rick Kua, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, you know, 
Yeah, that, that, uh, the, the, we, I did two co music videos for Michael W. Smith. One was called Secret Ambition, which everybody knows, which, you know, is the story of Jesus. And then well, I, it, and that's a, that is a standard. I mean, we, we go back to, I, to me, that was the first like real Christian music video that looked like some of the stuff I was watching on MTV. Mm -hmm. Like that one was as good a quality as anything I'd seen in Christian music at that point. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, it was just that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then we did this other song called I Miss the Way. And, you know, that's the one that got the Dove Award, which was like, what? Really? Really? It's like, you know, I mean, it was kind of made me kind of a little angry. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, it's an ambition. <laughs> well, and you still you know, won. I mean, come yeah, on. I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> still Michael and I, you know, got to go up there together and all that. Yeah. When, and, you know, we won, you know, on, on uh, Voice of God. Remember when you were That's talking? That's right. Around? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, you, so the first video I remember us working on together was the Basics of Life video. Mm -hmm. And we shot it in Tulsa. Yep. That's right. Where, yeah, I didn't. None of diner, us lived that old there. Diner? The is that diner still there? You know, I don't know. It's on. It was on like Denver. Yeah. Um, downtown. I. I'm sure it's not, but I, yeah. I keep meaning. I've only been here 17 years now. I keep meaning to go look at that video again and see if I can find some of the places. I know that school's not there anymore that we right. filmed in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a that was a dream of mine, leaning up against a, you know a you know, a signpost and looking off in the distance. <laughs> and I thought I was so cool until I watched it back and went, yeah, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. But I mean, you got to remember how edgy we were because, you know, in that diner, we had people smoking cigarettes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, that's right. Cause yeah, I'm, we, you know, if, if we're going to do something, let's make it real. Yeah. We got I mean, a little, we got a little flack for that. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. I remember some of the purists were, you know, not happy that we depicted smoking in a, they don't want like, but that's, if you're going to a diner, that's what people do. Yeah. At least I mean, back in the early nineties, they did. This isn't a church youth group. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, this is, this was a real diner and, you know, Kurt's sitting there singing, you know I mean? <laughs> like, isn't that what you do at a diner? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If we're going for realistic, of yeah, course, yeah. Kurt's going to be belting it out in a diner. <laughs> um, hey, let's go back a little bit before we get into any of the specifics of the videos, which I want to do. Uh, I want to know just about, some of your influences and, and how you knew that this was something you wanted to do with your life. Well, you know, it's kind of funny when I was a little kid, my parents had a reel to reel machine audio and um, I had some, my parents were Canadian and I had a, a, a really good friend up in Canada who also had a real, real machine. And so we would make little programs, you know, 15, 20 minutes, we do joke time, you know, we do tell stories and all this and send them back and forth. And we did it for years. And so, but I kept perfecting. I created an open for it and I did all this stuff. And I was like, this is pretty cool. I kind of enjoy this. And then, you know, my, I, I went to Bible school. Uh, Central, I was going to Penn State because my parents were, were teen challenged in Pennsylvania. And David Wilkerson came to our house at one point in time because my dad worked with David really close. Oh, wow. And uh, David says, where are you going to college? I said, well, I'm going to Penn State, Reading campus and he goes you need to go to cbc central bible college in springfield in springfield springfield yeah. missouri yeah yeah i'm like okay <laughs> i mean because i haven't have no calling to be a preacher but you know i was like well great i can get out of the house i can move away you know and he said and i'll pay for that wow he said i'll pay for your whole first year and he did and so during that first year at cbc I took an elective called TV production course. And I, that's a, that, that sounds like fun. And then when I took it, I was like, bam, this is what I want to do. Huh. And um, I transferred to over to Evangel the next year. And that's where I completed, got my degree there. And, uh, you know, they just put, took, brought me back about uh, four years ago and put me on their wall of fame. Oh, wow. Evangel. Congratulations. Yeah. So they, you know, they had me speak for the student body and I taught some classes and a whole bit. And you know, so it's like Wall of Fame made Evangel. <laughs> wow, that so Evangel is is very strongly connected. There, there are a lot of there are a handful of universities that are really strongly connected to that era in Christian music, and Evangel is definitely one of those. Yeah. Um, so Marty from For Him. 
That's an evangelical I grad. It's a you two. You went to college together. Yes, oh, I knew wow. way before you guys did. I didn't think I. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, I mean, we we would hang out at Evangel, you know. I mean, and uh, it's like then the next thing you know, I see him with you guys with Roger Breland down there. There we shot that last show that you guys sang at. I remember, and I directed that. I do not remember you directing that, and you know why? Yeah. I probably don't remember because I was deathly ill. Were you really? Night. Yeah, oh. I was. I was actually in the hospital the night before. I had really. I don't know. I th they think it was maybe pharyngitis or just it was like a, a really strong twenty four hour flu. And I mean, I'm on fluids and mm -hmm. just sick as a dog. And I and woke that was up your about last show as as it was. Yeah, it was their live recording, and um, I was. I remember waking up around four p.m. on concert day, and dragging myself jack and i just were newly married and mm -hmm. she helped me get dressed and get to the venue and i just i remember i it was it's just it was a blur so i don't even know if i met I you or I, or said anything to you but i had that's really crazy i had no idea that you directed that yeah yeah i mean uh, uh that's a, that's and I, I saw marty I go, marty i didn't know you, you were in this band you know, and, and you guys are starting your own group. He goes, yeah, this, this is our last one. And we're going out on our own. It's like, wow, that's really cool. So, you know, I, Marty and I go way back. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, there weren't a lot of Christian music videos before that. So we're talking, we're talking late eighties, mm -hmm. you know, there before you started doing what you were doing, was there anybody out there that was, you know, making that kind of well, you know, the Gar Garmon Key did a little bit. You know, they mm -hmm. did that 666 video. Oh, yeah, that's right. That MTV aired, you know, and they got yeah. a lot of that one. Yeah, that's right. But that was when I'm like, when I saw that, I said, well, boy, you know, obviously they had a budget for that one. But um, I said, you know, if I'm going to do music videos, they've got to be that good. You know, I mean, it, it can't be Christianese. I mean, I tried to stay away from that because, you know, Kids right away read, oh, bro, this is something my parents would listen to. I, I tried to do something that they would want to listen to, which I still do to this day. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I grew up a kid of the 70s, rock and roll 70s. You know, I mean, I had my bands, you know, that I loved. The Queen, be one of the big, big, one of the early Queen and all that. But, you know, and but still, I try to l listen to what's going on if, if music influences and it's not always Christian. I mean, there's a lot, there are a lot of great Christian bands, but like right now, we're we're doing a a, a Petra, big Petra project for their 50th anniversary, and uh, we've met with them several times, and hopefully, in Jesus' name, we we've got the funding lined up. We'll know. There was some big calls yesterday. Uh, we have Warner Brothers um, who was going to distribute it, and Bob Hartman's writing new songs. Oh wow. And, and so I'm, I met with Bob and I said, Bob, you know, I, I want you to listen to, I probably shouldn't say the names of these bands, but they're secular rock bands, you know? And I said, L listen to that, you know, because that's what kids are listening today. Listen, and, you know, we don't want it to sound like, like Petra did in the eighties. Let's make this sound something. So, so you're, you're, you're commenting on their actual recording process. Yes. Yeah. Cause and, we're a brand new record. Yeah. And so that's all, that's all going to be interwoven the video and the and yeah all that we're, together we're, that's exciting we're doing a documentary in you know, like an hbo style documentary and our goal is to do a live concert in nashville at, at opry opryland yeah. opry. and uh you know they'll perform a lot of the uh the oldies but goodies and new songs and we want to bring do you know like, like tim mcgraw i had no idea tim mcgraw he's a huge petra fan wow yeah, and that, they, yeah, it's they interesting. Performs Petra songs live. What? Yeah, Tim McGraw. That's and crazy. So we're, we're, you know, and so I, I've done some investigating. I know how to get to them. I mean, so, but we're going to make it an event, not just a Petra show. You know, so. Yeah. But that's a, that's an exciting thing that we're working on right now. But that's but really cool. Goes back to what the influences. My influence yeah. today, to this, to this day, I still, I'm not stuck in the '70s. You know, uh -huh. I try to always upgrade and, you know, raising a couple kids, you know, I, I hear what they listen to, you know, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool who they are. And, yeah. you know, I take them to, to shows sometimes, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way with my kids. They, 
um, they have very eclectic musical tastes, but very forward, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like they've kept me a little bit younger in my taste for music and just what the sound is out there by them sending me playlists and go, Hey dad, listen to this band. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I would have never listened to that had my kids not sent that to me. So I do, I do think that oh, yeah. that does help us as we grow older to appreciate, you know, and not like what our parents were like, you kids and your music, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. we want that Southern gospel. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so let me go back to, I want to go back to like the MTV days. So, I mean, I was a teenager when mm -hmm. MTV first started and I watched MTV man every morning on yeah. my way to, you know, before I went to school, having my breakfast, watching Duran Duran videos and, mm -hmm. you know, all those, all those great, uh, I mean, and a lot of them were, they're, they were pretty bad. I mean, I'm obviously not Christian, mm -hmm. um, but there was, it opened up a whole new world for artists. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's the old story of what kind of killed Christopher Cross's career. You know, yeah. he had this award-winning record in 79 and won all the dozen. I've had Omar on the, on the podcast. And we talked about that a little bit. Uh, and then he goes on national television and everybody kind of sees what he looks like. I know it's terrible to have to say that, but his popularity just went right out the window because, right. because now music videos are a thing. And you kind of have to look a certain way and act a certain oh, way. Yeah. You have to be cool in front of the camera, not just behind the microphone. And so yeah. uh, that, that I, I, I grew up in that, you know, going, okay, eventually, if I'm ever going to be an artist, I've, you know, music videos are part of the future. Right. I mean, if you remember Squire, is it Billy Squire? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, same thing happened to him. Uh-huh. He did a, a video that really did not show him in a good light in his nope. career. After. Yeah, I remember watching that going, oh, dear, I don't know what to think about this. Yeah, what's, <laughs> what song was that? I can't remember the song. I don't but, know, but uh, dancing and doing all this yeah, stuff. Like, uh -huh. like, that's not Billy Scott. That's uh -huh. not cool. Yeah, no, that's not what I, that's not the picture I had in my head when I listened to his music, and he was amazing. Yeah, yeah I um, think he was great. I mean, I love his, <laughs> love his drummer. But yeah, I mean, it's really important how you position artists and, and how they look on, on video. And I always, you know, I mean, and eventually I, I, one the respect of a lot of christian labels you know i come out with these whacked out ideas and they go okay well you think you can pull this off and go yep and they go okay well and, and they would let me do it you know and, and were I'm they not, were they limited were they were you limited in your budget should they give you a good budget to do this stuff or something you had to be really creative you with? Know, it depends i mean like carmen a lot of times i i mean i wouldn't say unlimited but they would give me some really good budgets but, you know, but and then I would also have to, you know, they say they call me up and go, well, we've got X amount of dollars. We need you to do two videos or one video or whatever. And and come, you know, and I, it's like I get that, I did a video for a band called Guardian and I did yeah. a, a song called Way Home Back. And we shot it up there in. in uh, oh, is it a Wasso where, where that old theater or old um, hotel is up there that that uh, the guy who they named after the airport and all that. What's his name? I can't. Oh yeah. Uh, Will Rogers. The uh, Will Rogers hotel. Yeah. yeah we uh -huh. got it up there, you know, and, and I, I had them playing to a bunch of senior citizens. And so we get, you know, and in, in the lobby of the Will Rogers hotel and, you know, the, the record labels like was what really you, you want to see guardian playing to a bunch of, 80 year old people i said yeah i said and they're gonna dance and they're gonna jump and they're gonna do all and they're like okay and then i you you have a bow constrictor you you have uh <laughs> an ostrich in it i mean i gotta I, go back and watch this i i went crazy on all these and of course guardian love love the idea um but you know we went got to an, went to a nursing home and we paid, you know, paid everybody who wants to show up and be at the music video. Incredible. And these really old ladies are up dancing around and Guardians playing, rocking. And, and, and it's like, I've never <laughs> seen that before. And it's like, you know, and, and so that, that I, that, that's, I try to think outside the box, you know, and I never saw anyone on MTV do that. You know, I mean, I've never, you know, I mean, I, I learned some shooting techniques from MTV, but I always try to think, okay. When I listen to a song, what's the first two or three ideas I will get? And then I go, oh, okay, been there, done that, seen it. We'll try to come up with, I try to come up with something different. And I'll listen to a song 50 times. 
until I get an idea. Sometimes I'll listen to a song once and the whole thing plays out my mind and I just can't write it fast enough. You know, so it, 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 you just never know. But, you know, MTV definitely influenced me on technique and style, um, but I tried not to copy it too much, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's what you're really great at. As I think back at some of the some of those great videos that you're a part of is that it did have its own, you had your own touch. Mm -hmm. Like I could tell a lot of times, which was one of your videos, not that you're predictable at all, but there was like, there's a certain quality to mm -hmm. what you do that made you stand out. And, you know, in my opinion, you were the guy in yeah. the eighties and nineties yeah. making music videos. And, um, and you just had to be in such demand. And were you just like, like wall to wall day oh, yeah. after day, week after and week, I, just, and I'd have to turn some down, you know I mean? People call me and say, you know, I have this amount of money to do a music video. I can't do it for that. You know, I mean, I got these, these much better budget videos yeah. that I got coming. And I mean, and I'm still doing it. You know, I'm I, not, not, not as many because, you know, that whole genre has pretty much died. You know, there's no place yeah. to hear it. I mean, only right. online. But, you yeah. know, we're going to do a new Petra video uh, with this on this pop project. And we're, I've already got some cool ideas of, of taking it into the 23rd century or whatever, you yeah, know, wherever we are. <laughs> yeah, some, but I mean, to to it's not going to look like anything I've ever done for Petra before. Yeah, and that's and, awesome. But, yeah. So, uh, is there anybody that you didn't get to work with that you wish you had? Like when you talk about having to turn down projects, uh, was there anybody that was like, oh man, I would have loved to have worked with that artist? I never got to work with Toby alone. You know, I got to work with DC Talk. Uh huh. You know, never got to do a when it, but Toby was. He, he was like Carmen, you know, he had this guy, Eric Welsh, you know, Eric, you know, yeah, he, uh -huh. yeah I know Eric and Eric um, was his only go-to guy. He didn't talk to anyone else about it. And, you know, and, and I worked their butts off on that addicted to Jesus video. And I think, you know, they're under their breath, cussing me out. <laughs> but we, we, we shot Steven, five nights in Steven, a row. can I, can I just confess? We all cussed you out under our breath. <laughs> oh, lots God. and lots of times. But then I'm not doing my job. You know? <laughs> no, no, you were, you were yeah. pushing us, pushing us past what we were comfortable doing and, yeah. you know, making us do things we weren't, we didn't know we were capable of. And uh, right. yeah. for that, I appreciate it. I, you know, I look, I go back and look at those videos now and, and just, and cringe because of the hair and maybe the clothing and, you know, just my awkwardness, but it, it those, uh, they're, they're time capsules. Yeah. Thank God we have yeah, those. At that, that point in time, that was what mm -hmm. was happening. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk about Carmen a little bit because I, th I think that's, your, your name probably gets associated with Carmen more than anyone from mm -hmm. that era. And I remember seeing Carmen and I, uh, gosh, I wish he was still with us because I would, I would love to just continue to, to tell Carmen you know, mm -hmm. what, what, a, what a difference he made in my life and so many people that ended up doing what we were doing. Uh, yeah. but, uh, I remember seeing him in like 1984, I was in going to school at Oklahoma state university in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And he played in our mezzanine, which mm -hmm. was just this little, this little gathering area on the first floor of our dormitory. And there were probably 15 or 20 of us that showed up in folding chairs and he put on his tracks and he got his guitar and played some of that. And, um, and oh, yeah. I just, that, that very first cassette that he had. And I remember, mm -hmm. I remember emptying out whatever I had in savings, wrote a check or something. I'm like, I think I have $20 left in my account. Mm -hmm. And I bought as many of those cassettes as I could. Cause I'm like, I've never heard anybody like this before. Yeah, He was, and then I think he came to our church there in Stillwater, like a couple nights later. And um, he was just, he was one of a kind and, you know, the things Good. that he could do and the stories that he could tell, you know, when you talk about getting a whole image in your mind, when you hear a song, I mean, that played right into your wheelhouse, didn't it? Oh, I tell you, I mean, they're, they're, they're cutting my lawn and, and it's trimming. So hopefully it's not too loud. No, I can't hear anything. Okay. All right. Anyways. Uh, yeah. I mean, when, uh, Carmen would send me a new song. A, a lot of times it, the story was already there, you know, like, which is invitation, you know, I mean, you've got to hear that. No, I don't hear it. Okay. Anyways, yeah, let's what, keep going. Okay. Well, edit point. Um, but like, which is invitation that was already, that was written, you know, the storyline was written. I just had to come up with a creative way to tell it, 
you know, I mean, you could have just shot the storyline the way it was, but I, if you ever go back and look at that, you'll see how I added things to it, angles that I shot, added, I mean, these things, I mean, you know, it's like, I always, I took it to a different level than what Carmen had wrote, even though it's a great song, you know, and, and that's how we work together. And I um, mean, so he always knew that whatever he would bring to me, I would bring my touch to it. And it's like, you know, the one, the only time we really like, where I was like, he's like, are you sure? It was, it was a song I, he wrote called I Will Serve the Lord. Yeah. You that song? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, well, yeah, because we sang it for him, sang it at the uh, right, right, yeah. Carmen Tribute special that you directed yes. a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, David Foster produced the, the track and David Foster was in the music video. Right. And, and I did, uh, you know, we shot that out in Los Angeles and I got to meet David Foster and work with him and all of that. And it was really cool. But I mean, you know, I came up with all these parables kind of thing within the music video. And he is like, I don't know. Like, like I had a, a girl run, you know, when he was talking about, you know, when you, you talk to the enemy and he has to flee you speak the word of jesus and, and and i had this girl running on a railroad track with a train chasing her a locomotive i mean and so that was I, before green screens yeah i mean it was <laughs> the real deal and she turns around and faces that train and just you know it's, it says in the name of jesus and that train stops and then it disappears dissolves out and and you know it's like Carmen's like, oh, I see what you were doing. Because, you know, on paper, he didn't get it. And I tried to explain yeah. it. You know, but I said, just no, I got it up here. And the record label just had given up by then trying to even get involved. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Carmen and the record labels were, that was that was a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, they, they, they were like, you know, I we, we, we trust you. We don't, we, we're not going to yeah. put you. Just do what you see. And yeah, um, you're where, selling, you're selling so much. We don't, we don't know what to do with you, but you're selling so much. Oh yeah, then, I mean, yeah. Just just office, go do whatever you want to do. In my office here, yeah, I bet I think four gold albums from just Carmen, and and th at that point in time, it was uh, and I got a platinum, so that's twenty five thousand units for gold, and then fifty thousand units for platinum. Wow. So, you know, we were selling a lot of video albums. Yeah, and that's yeah, uh, selling videos was that was a high end, that was a higher end thing than just selling a CD. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Nineteen ninety nine to twenty nine ninety nine. I mean, you know, yeah. but you mm -hmm. know, he was selling tons of them, and and so I so there's a lot of other artists that I did worked with. I got their gold gold albums. You know, Shonda Pierce, and she's not so much music video, but she did. I did a lot of comedy stuff with her. Yeah. And Mark Lowry, I did a lot more comedy stuff with him, and we did some like Weird Al par parody parodies. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, that really came out hilarious. And, you know, and he's, I got a gold al album from him because people wanted to see those parodies. So, you know, so. Yeah. 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 An, it was an interesting time. I, it, it is kind of sad that, that that's not really a thing anymore. Um, because, yeah. but when YouTube's taken over and, mm -hmm. you know, everybody can kind of do their own thing now. But, um, you know, I, I do believe in that time capsule is something worth going back and opening back up. And mm -hmm. it just gives you those great warm memories. And and just like, just like the music does, the videos can remind you of a certain time in your life, what right. you were going through, um, you know, just, just, just kind of those warm fuzzies of, uh, wow, that was, that was a really cool era back then. Is there yeah. one video that you just, that you go back to and go, that's my favorite thing I've ever done? No secret ambition. You know, I mean, you know, my, the whole, my whole, what I wanted to accomplish was, okay, you take this video, you show it to your friend. Um, and after the video is over, you go, okay, are you, are you ready to receive Christ? Because you just saw what he did for us. And I, that happened over and over and over and it even aired on national television in the Soviet union back in the day when uh, somebody was t doing a, a Christian tour you know, and they were on the talk show and, and they said, well, you know, can Tom Newman, who played Jesus in that video, uh, was on was on the air. And he said, well, let me play the, this video the way I play Jesus. And they said, OK, their phones lit up so wow. much. More, they did. They had they said they never happened before like that. Wow. It, just the power of, of the message of Jesus, you know, and so at, at that, at that that video to this day. You know, I mean, someone told, told me, I, I read this somewhere, CCM Magazine, when they were still around, 
said, you know, the top two Christian music videos of all time is number one, um, DC Talk, uh, Jesus. Jesus Freak? Jesus Freak. Uh -huh. And then number two, Secret Ambition. Wow. That's, that was uh, the voting of all the readers. So, you know, it, I, I connect with those people and, and still does. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, churches still air that every Easter. You know, people still use it in their youth group to this day. You know, I mean, yeah. That, that's a problem. I think, you know, no one does storytelling anymore. You know, all music videos now for artists to be showpieces to show mm -hmm. the artist. Right. And how cool the artist is, which, you know, I mean, I, I did that for some artists too, but I mean, but telling a story. And so when the video is over, you go, wow, I never thought about that. You know, that that's what I thought I brought, I brought to the table for a lot of music videos. You know, because I wasn't interested in making, you know, as they call them, what, candy, uh, eye candy? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of eye candy shots. Which is what for him was. We were just eye candy. Yeah, you guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just set up a camera and why went and, you know, got a coffee and came back. Oh, you guys done? <laughs> yeah. You done smoldering in front of the camera? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but so, but that that's what's missing, I think, in music videos to this day, um, is just storytelling. Such a great opportunity, just in four minutes. Well, there's an awful lot you can say instead you of know, just you know, that. Art. That's it's interesting you say that because uh, you know with this podcast, I've had so many people on Wayne Watson, Clay Cross, uh, Michael Martian talked about this a lot when he was on Russ Taff. You know, just about how music is different now in in the Christian world, it, in the day you were able to tell stories, you draw pictures, you, uh, Don Cook said this, um, in, in our, in our conversation that, you know, we wrote a song about a roller coaster and mm -hmm. how that, you know, how that, uh, applies to the Christian life. And he's like, you just don't hear that anymore because most of what is going on is worship, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be worshiping God, but there is a lost art of storytelling in, yeah. Christian music. Uh, Matthew West does it does it well. There are mm -hmm. a few out there, but you know, for for the most part, that's it's kind of a lost conversation. You know, lost art. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like you mentioned Wayne Watson. I did a video for him called "It's Time," mm -hmm. and um, I did a whole like uh, futuristic video um, set set you know centuries ahead of us. And he only sang twice in the whole song. The rest of it was a story, but it was about basically about how the children of Israel got released, um, from, from uh, each Egyptians, but I did it in, in, in a science fiction story. And, um, it, it, everyone was like, this is really out there. I said, don't worry, it's going to be cool. And then went to this day, you know, people still say, if, if you look it up on YouTube, it's time by Wayne Watson. I mean, it's very, very, we, that was another five night shoot, but we had all kinds of lasers and explosions. And when at one scene where we had just, you know, like all kinds of fire and flashes and, you know, this is when you really put something into it, you know, yeah. you know, not, not let, let's have someone stand in front of an LED, LED screen and, and look cool, you know, and, and he, he probably cussed me. <laughs> I mean, like you guys did. <laughs> same thing because i really pushed him uh, so can we just can we just tell our listeners here we didn't really <laughs> did we cuss we just no made, no we know we but, just but, maybe some angry words yeah so, <laughs> some like, frustrating words yeah, yeah. Serious? you really don't want yeah. to make me do that well, yeah well, that's up to you if you want it to be a good video or not <laughs> those were hard though i just i do remember those are a lot of hard work Mm -hmm. And probably one of the reasons I didn't look forward to him. Number, not, number one, I just was never comfortable trying to portray something in the camera. And that was all on me. I mean, I just didn't have a feel for what that was, but it was also a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I can really appreciate what's going on with, um, you know, with, with, with artists that put that work and are good at it, mm -hmm. you know, are good at actually uh, being, likable in front of the camera and all that kind of stuff so um yeah i mean remember like voice of god i mean we traveled to several states you know we we, we flew up to uh oregon i think and then mm -hmm. went yeah with forest yeah you know somebody and, somebody almost died on that on that uh voice of god video i don't know if it was marty or someone because we were man we were right on 
the edge, edge of, of one of those cliffs. Yeah. And it was like, okay, back up a little more, back up a little more. And we're like, oh, okay, let's hurry and get this shot before somebody tumbles all the way down. But yeah, yeah that was a great looking video. I, I, now I did enjoy that one because of the locale and where we were yeah. and man, just some really beautiful scenery up there. And it really matched the tone of, right. of the song that we were singing. Yeah, for it's sure. Like, I did a video with Wayne Watson and Sandy Patty called Another Time, Another Place. Yeah that we shot at, at this lighthouse up in th uh, Three Moon Bay, Cal mm -hmm. California, which is just south of San Francisco. And this is before drones were created. So I had to hire a, a helicopter to get some really cool over flying overhead shots. And they're standing on the edge of the cliff right there by the hel by the, the, the lighthouse. And I had this helicopter flying over them and it almost <laughs> blew both of them over. Oh no. They had to back up and I had to reshoot the scene. They, they said, we can't be this close to the edge. He says that, that, the, the, that, that downdraft from that helicopter is just too much. So wow. <laughs> yeah, so I think and I saw he, him just, he just posted about that the other day. He did. Uh, he did. Yeah. He just reminded me of that story. He said, you know, cause we, we had like five flyovers that we did and and it was like really it was i didn't realize how dangerous <laughs> yeah that was gonna be and yeah so i said well let's back up from the edge of the cliff maybe just a little bit but you know that was the first time i worked with wayne and sandy hmm. you know and then with that one a dove you yeah know? and then we went up and did uh with sandy a hand on my shoulder you remember that song mm -hmm, i do yeah we shot that up there in arizona there on that lake big big lake up there that's going down to nothing but we spent five days on a boat uh, with the crew on five boats and Lauren Ballman from Ward Records, yeah. he was doing the album cover at the same time. I'm doing the music video. I mean, and we, we had chefs on the boat. I mean, it, it was like we were this package production shoot and yeah. uh, it was just great. You know, I mean, at night we just sit around the boat and play guitars and well i didn't know but we you know, they'd sing and do all that i mean that's one thing i didn't really ever get was a musical gene where i can i can hack i can hit a drum set and break a stick but i mean you know <laughs> you can't be good at everything steven i know i know and, just and I be hat really I, I, I never really cared to <laughs> yeah you know, people go like well you know we don't don't you want to be a preacher like your dad because my dad was a preacher mm -hmm. and i'm like well you know i am preaching but i'm preaching from behind the camera you know, and that's my pulpit. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm not into standing up in front of people and and orating and doing all. I mean, that's just not me. But I my I I write my my message and then I I make the artists do it and make them grumble under the breath at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that but that's you know. Well, I, I'd like to take this to a little more of a personal side of things because you know that's one of the things I think people love about these conversations it's not just about the making of the art but the people behind the making of the art and and you know everybody's got a story to tell mm -hmm. and i know that that you've been through some incredible loss in the last few years and um you know i'd love to know just kind of how throughout your journey you know god I, I i just can't even imagine to how to process what you've been through yeah. but i also know the faithfulness of god that he he gives us a little he, he deposits things within us along the journey to yeah. where when, when tragedy does happen, mm -hmm. there are things that we can draw on. Can you just, can you take us through, you know, some of the things you've been through in the last few years and maybe how you feel like God, you know, was, was with you through those seasons? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm writing a book and um, I'm telling a lot of those stories in the, in the book. I mean, I, I'm not personally writing it. This guy's, Who's, who's an autobiographer. I've got about 30 hours of interview so far in the can with him, and we're still going to do some more. But, um, you know, it, we're talking about that. And, you know, of course, losing Carmen, losing Kenny Marks, Kenny Marks and I were like, you know, best buds. I mean, all those people. But the worst thing was losing my daughter. And, um, you know, she was only 24 years old, and, and some guy lost control of his truck on the other side of the interstate and when it was icy in Alabama. And he crossed the, the the center section and hit her head on. And so, you know, I had to, you know, fly down there. And we, we of course, we couldn't drive. We got stuck in Birmingham because the roads were so icy. So I had a bunch of buddies in, in Nashville that hired Channel 4's helicopter. Wow. And, and Channel 4 News, Channel 4, came and picked us up and, and flew us to, to where she was at, Opalaka. 
in, in Alabama. Um, but you know, that, that was a hard thing to deal with, but you know, I had a, a, a pastor, Steve Berger. I don't know if you know who Steve Berger is, but I know, he, yeah, I know who he is. He lost his son to a motorcycle accident. Hmm. And, uh, he, he really, he, he really reached out to me, him and his wife, and he gave me a book called God Nods. And it's like, where God lets you know through not overtly, but he lets you know, things are okay, or she's okay. And, you know, I, I read that book and I said, God, I sure could, I could use a God nod. And he goes, well, I gave you one. I said, you did. And he said, and he reminded me, see the, the theme that we did, my, my daughter's really big into music and she loved the nightmare before Christmas, you know, that Disney movie mm -hmm. and that, that whole soundtrack, she wore that out. She just loved the orchestration on that. And, and so we played that at her, at, at her wake and at the funeral. And we, you know, had a bunch of little jacks and things around set up. And but then afterwards, we went to this barbecue joint after the the funeral, and, and then this guy just donated all this barbecue. So we had about four hundred people show up to the after service. And the you know we're just talking and talking. And, and I, I said to Gentry, I said, Gentry, look at this girl. She just walked in. Um, and she's wearing a Nightmare Before Christmas shirt. I mean, big lettering on it and the whole bit. And Gentry said, well, I'm going to go say hi to her and see if she was at Emily's funeral. And she walked over to her and, and she said, hi, I, you know, this is, a, this is the, uh, the after funeral dinner. Were you at Emily's funeral today? And th that lady, without missing a beat, she said, no, dear, it's a sign. And she said she didn't know what to make of that. It's a sign. And then, you know, she, she was going to walk over and, and tell me. And then she turned around to ask this lady another question. She was gone. Oh, my gosh. I mean, she, she, she did, didn't find a seat. She, she, she was gone. Wow. And so it's like, like God let me know she was okay. Hmm. And, boy, you don't know how much that got me through to know that. And, and I can tell you story after story after story. I mean, right after the, my daughter had the accident, she was trapped in the car. And this lady who I heard stopped and got out and got in the car with Emily and prayed with her. Wow. And she had infants in her car and it's freezing. She just left her car running. She said, I just knew I needed to, to go and get in that car with that girl and pray, pray with her, whoever was in that car and pray. And so she grabbed Emily's hand. Emily was still conscious at the time. And um, she said, can I pray with you? She said, yes, yes. And, and so anyways, I, I, you know, the doctors at the hospital told me about it. And, you know, and I heard from several other people. Yeah, some lady uh, uh, stopped and prayed with her. And I well, does anyone know her name? Does anybody know anything about where she was from? Or what? Nobody knew anything. Well, I get this message out of the blue about six months later on Facebook. And she goes, um, are you Emily Yake's dad? I said, yes. She goes, you don't know me, but I'm the lady who got in the car with your daughter and prayed with her. Wow. And, and I said, well, how in the world did you find me? She goes, your name came up on my feed this morning, and we're not even friends. And she said, Stephen Yake. She said, I wonder if that's Emily's dad. And so, and then I felt the goosebumps wow. and, and then I heard God's spirit that that's another nod. Mm. Do you know, I please don't feel like this is making light of what you just shared, but it, it, some of this stuff sounds like it could have been in a Carmen video. Yeah. Like some of this stuff that's just like the, these, these miracles that happen to these, these connections that happen. That's what Carmen was all about. The story he was telling about what's happening mm -hmm. behind the scenes of yeah. reality and, in and, and, you know, um, and I, to me, I just, I, I always try to connect the dots mm -hmm. to see that God's always setting you up. God is always saying, Hey, I, I knew this was going to happen a long mm -hmm. time ago, and I'm placing you in position so that when it comes time, you can emotionally deal with it. You'll, you'll feel my presence, but you'll also be able to draw on my faithfulness from the past and the messages that I've been pouring into your lives. And I just, I can't help but see the connection there of just seeing yeah. got the thread of God all the way through this. Right. I mean, and you know, I, I can't 
deny that I wasn't mad at God for a while. Sure. It's like, you know, God, why, why, you know, why? Yeah. And I, I know I'm never going to know why until I get to heaven. And then yeah. it's not going to matter because she's going to be run up to me and grab my, grab my neck. And I'm Emily. Yeah. You know? I mean, and all that's it's like, who cares? Yeah, now that's right. Together. That's right. And, and for, you know, a thousand years from now, we're still going to be together. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like, so I, I have to try to put it in that perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing that we're living right now is temporal, you know, right. and you know, we, we don't know how much longer we're going to have, but once we get to heaven, it's for all eternity. Yeah. We're all going to be together. Yeah. You know, the, one, the ones who make, make it. And, um, you know, so when I start putting it in that aspect of thinking, I, I, I can really, it makes it a lot easier for me to handle. Yeah. I, you know? it's, you know, when people say, I got a lot of questions when I get to heaven. And the first question I'm going to ask is, I'm like, yeah, I doubt it. I don't think you will. I think you'll fall on your knees mm -hmm. and you'll worship. And yeah. then you won't care. You just yeah. kind of won't care once you get there. Those of us that have gone through tremendous loss over the last several years, you know, I don't, I don't think we're going to be standing before God going, Hey, why did you let that happen? Why did you do this? I, I just don't think we're going to care because like you said, we're going to be together. And mm -hmm. the time that we spend in eternity is going to absolutely dwarf the time that we spent in this reality. Yeah. And yeah. You think about it. I mean, she was 24. So I spent 24 years with her. But, you know, like I said, a thousand years from now, that's going to dwarf it. Like yeah. you said, you yeah, know, I, I love like, that. And it's like, okay, I can deal. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no idea how much longer I have here, but I do know what I'm looking forward to. Mm. You know? And um, I got my parents all up there now and, you know, a lot of my great friends. And so it's going to be a big reunion. Yeah. And grief changes you, doesn't it? Grief, grief, oh, sure you go does. through enough grief, it changes your perspective and even, you know, uh, what you do for a living and how you tell stories and what's important to you now than right. maybe what was 20, 30 years ago. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, and I, and yeah, I still have grief, you know, I mean, that's never going to go away. I mean, until the day I take my last breath, I'm going to miss her, you know? And I mean, every time I go back to Franklin, um, I, I go see her grave, you know, and mm -hmm. just sit there and talk to her, you know, and, you know, tell Jesus I'm waiting, you know, we're mm -hmm. waiting for him, you know, and I can't wait to see you, you yeah. know, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, but, it, it, it's not like it, it was like an overbearing dark pain for months. Well, you know, that, that time, time is a healer of all things. I mean, that's a, that, that's a, an old saying, but you know, I mean, so that for me, that, 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 that I'll carry that to the day I die, but it doesn't define me. Yeah. It's good. And you keep working and you've yeah. got more projects out there and, you know, um, I'm, I'm excited about this, this Petra project. Yeah. It's too. about time. Uh, Bob yeah. Hartman coming back. That's, that's amazing. You ought, to, you ought to hear these songs. I mean, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. It, it's great. And John Schlitt sounds amazing. He and, has not, he just doesn't age, does he? No, he doesn't. That and dude is just boy, incredible. It, 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 it's as clear and as crystal as it was in Head East, you know, yeah. I mean, his old rock band. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's just, and, and he's singing on these demos. And I mean, it's like, my God, this guy, what is he? He's 72. You know, I mean, there's Robert Plant could only wish he could hit those notes, you know, and, you know, it's, he's, God's just given him that vocal cord ability that it's the not diminished at all, you know? Mm. So, I mean, we yeah, we're excited about that. And, 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 you know, like I got a lot of, like I'm doing a church program that we're doing right now, which is, but I'm, it's not going to be, it's not a regular church program. I'm making it like a magazine program, you know? So, I mean, we have a little bit of preaching. We have a little bit of praise and worship, but we have some stories. We have some testimonies. We have some, um, so I'm making it move really fast. And so it's not just the open preach close, you know? I mean, that's been done to death. You know, if, if you want me to yeah. do it, so let me bring my touch to it. Yeah. And this pastor guy, you know, he saw, he looked at my website, yakefilms.com. And um, he said, you obviously have an idea what you're doing. He said, yeah, let's, let's do it. And so we're doing, we're doing it right now. I, we're doing the first six episodes. 
you know, that's awesome. Animation, animated open and animated bumpers and, you know, so as long as my phone keeps ringing, I mean, I am not retired, you know, I mean, as long as I got good health, you know, why should I, you know, you know, I'm, I live in Sarasota, Florida, and I moved down here after living in Nashville for 25 years. But my wife's parents live down here and, and she's the only child and they're getting up in years. And so we decided to move down here. But my best friend is Southwest. I mean, Southwest has a direct flight from Sarasota to Nashville and I'm flying back and forth. I don't know how many times over the last several years. So I can, I mean, I do all my pre-production, you know, I do my post-production, my editor sitting right here. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, so I can I can keep doing this and and just like like you you know, you know w w when do you stop? Yeah, why should you? I mean, if you uh, you've already, if you've got a story to tell, if you've got light in your eyes and breath in your lungs, then yeah. go do the work that God has set before you to do. And mm -hmm. I don't I don't know retirement is a is an interesting concept, but I don't really believe in it. I think let's yeah. just go until we can't go anymore. Yeah. And I just want to say on behalf of all the artists that have worked with you, thank you for. Uh, making us look good. Thank you for <laughs> bearing with these temporal, these, uh, uh, these, these artists that just, uh, you know, just want to get on and do something else. And we're like, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, let's, uh, um, I'll start that over again. I just want to thank you for making us look good over the years on behalf of all the artists that you've worked with, man, we have a time capsule that we can show our kids and our grandkids and laugh at and, and love and, and just, just have a great time with you. You've been a big, big part of our journeys and our lives. And again, on behalf of everyone you've worked with, I just want to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like right behind me is my, I call it my dove cage. You know, I've got 10 to dove awards there and the, the GMA award for, uh, for the year impact award. Um, and, you know, so it, it feels good to be recognized, but, it, but also it feels good to, to see the second generation of people that, that recognize that stuff. It's like, you know, there's a lot of people who can't wait to see Petra. And, and so how old are you? And they're, well, I'm 28, I'm you know, 30. I go, well, how would you know Petra? Well, you know, how, well, my parents listened to it while I was growing up. And so, you know, it's still it's percolating out there and it's, and it's really cool that, that, that you know, who knows that that's, it's like a book is could last forever. You know, after we're long gone basics of life, you know, I mean, if that, that CD could be still played a hundred years from now, you know, and, pe and people would love it, you know, and you guys, you all, we all be long gone, but um, you know, I'm glad we were able to leave something of impact. It's going to make a difference in people's lives. You know, and that's the bottom line.